No, it's not a surprise birthday party for Fortnite turning two, but instead it's a surprise content update that dropped this morning for the game. Included in the update is a new weapon that was leaked in the last video, the Storm Scout Sniper Rifle, which is in epic and legendary varieties, dealing 81 and 85 damage respectively with a 2.5 headshot multiplier in semi-automatic form, which fits the spray and pray meta for the theme of this season. It does, however, have a unique characteristic of being able to see through the storm wall when scoped in and having the storm minimap appear when scoping in with the rifle almost like how Pathfinder and Apex Legends knows where the next circle will be because Epic is great at lifting ideas from other sources like users on Reddit and its competitors. Also leaked in the 9.40 patch were the return of the presents item, this time in the Fortnite birthday form as opposed to Jesus birthday form and consumable birthday cakes around the map, both of which will be available on Thursday, July 25th to celebrate the second anniversary of Fortnite, even though the Battle Royale mode came out two months later in order to chase that PUBG trend. As of now, we're not sure where these cakes will be located, but back in season four, they were at the spots on the map shown on screen here, although most of these name locations are no longer in the game one year later. These consumable items that grant 5 health and 5 shield will be part of an upcoming birthday celebration set of challenges, which will most likely go live when those items do on Thursday, including gaining 50 health or shield from said cakes to unlock the cupcake emoticon, and dancing in front of 10 different birthday cakes to earn the birthday beats music pack. The other challenges of the set of 4 include playing 10 matches to grant you the frosted wrap that looks less like a topping that you put on a cake and more like something that you'd spunk onto one out of spite for the person that you're giving it to and outlasting 500 opponents if you like hiding like a biatch like a biatch or playing at least 25 team rumble matches to get you this birthday spray complete all four of the challenges to unlock the birthday slice pickaxe which is probably better than you don't eat that piece of cake because you don't know where the fuck it's been it's even worse than that eat the year old wedding cake tradition however if you can't wait until then to work on a honey do list like a miserable married cunt you can now start on the overtime challenges which were leaked in the last video and in case you missed it they are for those that are hashtag forever alone visiting loot lake what's left of polar peak and pressure plant all three of which had a big hand in that in-game event that occurred this past saturday you'll get this loading screen here with normal people checking out the showdown winner spoiler alert with weirdos staring at something else that's to its right dancing inside of a holographic Durburger head which is actually a week four challenge found neo tilted at the top of the building shown here on screen which will let you this loading screen pin out the World Cup event that will take place this weekend, July 26th through the 28th, if you fancy a competitive mode that relies on RNG almost as much as skill, and more on that later. Scoring a goal on an indoor soccer pitch, which was also a previous challenge, but way back in Season 4, Week 7, which had an entirely different map with tons of different soccer pitch locations that are also no longer applicable now. However, only one of them is indoors, and that's at the sports complex between Snobby Shores and Neo Tilted. Complete the challenge, and you'll get this loading screen here that was part of the artwork work for the launch of season nine epic recycling their assets being the greenest company around there's more challenges which don't require you to actually have social skills but are definitely easier when party assisted like dealing 2500 damage to opponents with an ar shotgun and smg respectively which are the only weapon categories you should be using to play the game anyways now on to those that require you have a friends list that isn't as empty as a nut on december 1st working together with friends to get 25 eliminations which is unclear if this means 25 eliminations collectively as a squad or if it requires damage from multiple friends in order to count towards one reviving a friend in three different matches and placing top 15 in duos or squads with a friend which is probably harder now that the storm chasers mode doesn't complete the challenge for you automatically since there are only eight teams in it lastly other stage challenges for the halves with the premium battle pass rewarding you being at level 23 71 and 87 of the battle pass which seem like random numbers unless you're a pittsburgh penguins fan but the second stage of completing those other tasks will unlock new styles for those skins complete all of these challenges to unlock the 15,000 XP reward. However, there are lines of code which point to a granted battle pass, so perhaps completing all of the challenges will actually give the upcoming Season 10 Premium Pass for free, similar to what Season 7 did for Season 8, or if this line of code is in there just for those in attendance of the aforementioned World Cup event, which has been confirmed by Epic as part of the ticket package. Speaking of that World Cup event, one of the other features added with this content update is the ability to watch from inside the game with a picture-in-picture -picture feature for people that have so much ADHD that they need to watch shit while also playing shit. You can watch the action on many of Epic streaming channels, including YouTube, in which there are in-game rewards for watching these set events. The times and dates of the events are July 25th for the Game Jam Hollywood premiere and July 26th for the World Cup Finals Day 1 to receive the Game Jam spray, July 27th for World Cup Finals Day 2 to receive the World Cup spray, and on July 28th for the World Cup Finals Day 3 to receive both the World Cup spray and the Redline wrap. In order to get the 
these rewards, however, you do need to link your YouTube and Epic Games account, and here's how to do it. Click on your avatar in the upper right-hand corner, and then the gear to bring up your settings, or just go to youtube.com slash account. Then click on connected accounts on the left-hand side, click connect next to the Epic Games one, and enter your credentials in order to link your accounts. It was slightly confusing as a YouTuber because you could only connect your main Gmail account and not your brand account that's associated with your YouTube channel, so make sure you pick the correct one when you click on your avatar if you're a YouTuber because of course Google has to make shit confusing due to chasing trends like when Google Plus integration was a thing. One person you may not be watching is XXIF who had been caught cheating by getting fed kills on multiple occasions during the Fortnite World Cup qualifiers and Epic Games then responded with a two week ban. However, he was still able to qualify into the finals anyway given the slap on the wrist. Some new footage has surfaced during the recent Trios Cash Cup which are more sketchy than a blowjob in an alley where he kills a player that's on a roof doing an emote which isn't crazy during a normal pub match when the rest of your team is eliminated and you don't want to back out to lose out on completing challenges however it's unheard of in competitive arena modes even if you're a single player in a squads match you still get points for every elimination every down and how long you last into the match so even staying alive like the Bee Gees as a solo player has its benefits so there's no fucking reason whatsoever to just give up Combine this piece of evidence with the previous instances of cheating and there should be no fucking way that Epic lets this cheating little cum dumpster play in a tournament for actual real cash money. As I stated in my Apex Legends hacker video yesterday, in order to deter cheating, the risk has to be greater than the reward. And when Epic set the punishment bar so low with only a two week ban, it is certainly then worth the reward in being able to compete in a tournament for monetary payouts. The solution is simple. You just gotta up the risk by making an example out of this ass clown with a perma ban or maybe just Epic wants to slow play the situation and have him embarrass himself in front of a live audience when he's not actually good enough to win legitly. Even though the final showdown event that took place on Saturday didn't actually cause as much destruction to the map as two giant NPCs appeared to do so before the monster's bones and singularity sword became a new spot to drop in until people realized that the loot there was shite. There have been leaks that do point to a more destructive end to the season, which according to an oopsie by PSN is August 1st, thus leaving you eight or so days to complete those aforementioned overtime challenges. The orb, which is at Loot Lake and helped ward off the Polar Peak monster, has been changing over different stages, which will result the which will result in the orb becoming some sort of rift, according to leak evidence from data miners, which I don't want to put in the video just in case of copyright issues, but as always, all of my sources are down below in the description. We also know season 10's end date as October 10th, or 1010 for season 10, pretty cheeky there, epic, which is very easy to remember, just like my birthday being 1212. However, we don't yet know what the theme of the upcoming season will be, besides, yay, all of the children are going back to school, so our lobbies are less annoying. Lastly, in Fortnite-related news, Microsoft has reported disappointing earnings, which isn't a surprise, given that nobody should actually want to buy a VCR with the next-gen console currently nicknamed Scarlet, being rumored for next year's holiday season, and there really aren't any exclusives to the console anymore without also having the Play Anywhere PC tie-in to allow players to actually experience what the game should be like without obsolete hardware. This earnings dip by the way, is in spite of increased Game Pass revenue, probably due to the recent Gears 5 tech test requiring it to participate in, which was a disaster for me after attempting to figure out how to install it for four hours, only to be greeted with an error message after running the game for just a few short minutes about my graphics card, which is above the recommended specs, and the app being magically unresponsive after restarts to correct the prior errors, so I guess that's why you have tech tests though, right? However, another reason for this is actually the slow decline of revenue from Epic's Fortnite which Microsoft takes a cut of whenever anything is sold in the Xbox store, which makes paying $60 a year for Xbox Live Gold memberships recoculous when you think about how much Microsoft skims off the top of in-game purchases from third-party companies. Back in May, there was a reported 38% drop from the previous year in spending, even though it's still the highest grossing free-to-play game out on the market right now, but does that mean that Fortnite is actually dying? I mean, Minecraft has made a comeback lately, and given the mass exodus from the game after broken promises, regarding fixing audio bugs that still haven't been addressed in Season 9 or the way that the meta has been changed up constantly with the ever-evolving rotation of weapons and strats, it's sometimes exhausting to keep up with. However, it's still constantly at the top of Twitch. Even with GTA 5 getting a new update today, it's still less than Fortnite. So, any talk of the game dying still has to be measured against the competition, even if it's losing out to itself at this time last year. Anyways, that's going to do it for this week's Fortnite news. I've been the Schwanz 27 out like the Sanchez. Mark Sanchez taking the Tony Romo route. Until next time.